pray that you will lead us, oh God, lead us, that you fill our hearts, that you bring us, oh God, into, into, a, into your perfect will. God, not just in our actions alone, but in our thoughts, in our, in our, in our belief, in our trust in you, oh God. Father God, may, may the life that flows out, God, of each one of us flow out of the tree of life. May the life that flows out into actions through our hands, our feet, our mouth, our words, and everything, oh God. Father, from this day all of us will flow out, oh God, from the tree of life. Not from the tree of the knowledge of good or evil. Not from God, your permissive will, but from your perfect will, oh God. Father, your perfect will, when man decrease and Christ increase. Your perfect will, oh God. Lord, right, where, where we have considered ourselves as rubbish, everything of the past is rubbish. God, and we press on towards the upper call in Christ Jesus. Oh God, the perfect will of God, where, our, where we forsake our, our desires and dreams. Oh God, Father, to take on, oh God, your dreams and your desires for us, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. I pray for each and every one of us, oh God, that's watching this, mo this moment. I pray for such a breakthrough, a breakthrough in faith, a breakthrough in faith, a breakthrough, oh God, in faith, oh God. That our minds are broken, oh God, broken away from the whole, from sin, broken, oh God, from thinking of just ourselves, but a mind that is focused and renewed by the word, renewed by the life of God, not just the law, the letter of the word, but the spirit of the word of God. Hallelujah. Flow, life flow. I pray and declare for life to flow into each one of us, for the life of Christ to flow to us. Oh, flow, God, new life. New life, I declare. New life into every single one that is watching. New life in Jesus' name. New Amen. life in Jesus' name. I Amen. speak new life over everyone in the name of Christ, oh God. Hallelujah. May the all is God. All things become new in you, oh God. New life, oh God. Jesus, you are the new life in us. You are the hope in us. You are the grace in us. Without you, we can do nothing. But because we you and because we abide and, we, and our feet, oh God, we abide in you, oh God. We will be like trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruits in season, oh God. So I declare new life to everyone. Declare new life, oh God, to everyone. Just receive everybody. Just receive. Just say, thank you, Lord, for new life. Thank you, Lord, for new life in Jesus. Receive the new life in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for new life. Thank you, Lord, for new life. Thank you, Lord, for the tree of life. Hallelujah. Just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. God, oh, God is doing a new thing in this season, oh God. God is doing a new thing in all our lives. Oh God, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Let's pray. Let's keep praying. Hallelujah. We are going to share this with our But let's keep praying. Let the Spirit lead. Just let the Spirit lead us. one thing, okay, yeah, if you have pain in your back, 
you can pray for yourself. You don't have to wait for anyone to pray for you. And, 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 uh, and sometimes you don't even have to look to a chiropractor or anything like that. Okay, I want you to do one thing. Okay, if you have pain in your upper back, most of the time it is because of frozen shoulders or because you are tight. You know the muscles are pinching the nerves. Alright, the muscles are pinching the nerves. Okay, or you, let's say you, are, you have pain in your lower back. Okay, you have pain in your lower back. You know, uh, the muscle, the, the same thing, you have muscles all throughout your body, right? And there are nerves flowing around through your body, through your bones, right? Okay, through your, through your, through your body. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes when, when you are tight, right? When you're, you feel tight or you feel pain on your, on your back, or even sometimes you feel pain in your, on your front, you know, it's not because you are having a heart attack, okay? You know, I learned one thing, you know, okay, because I got high blood pressure, okay? Uh, so sometimes, when I feel when I have pain in my in, in any part of my body, especially my upper chest, uh, you know, I will check my blood pressure. But some, most of the time, it's okay, okay. And sometimes I realize if I eat something wrong, you know, my stomach feels bloated. Sometimes it will feel like a like a tightness, you know, okay. You know, in the same way also. And sometimes when you have pain in your back, you know, it, it, sometimes you you think that it's a a, a, a a problem, a big problem. They need operation. It's not. Sometimes because the muscles are pinching the nerves, you know, we like to carry things, right? You know, sometimes we, we like to uh, carry heavy stuff, okay? You know, sometimes our posture is very bad. You know, sometimes we, we, we think we are superhero, but okay, can carry anything, can do anything, yeah? You know, but, but uh, and sometimes we, we, uh, we strain our, ourselves. You know, many people that feel all these pains in their body, right? They are very healthy people, you know, they go exercise, they do heat, Tabata hit, you know, they run how many kilometers, but they have pain. Why? Because they, they put themselves into some, their body into so much pressure. Okay? Yeah? Okay? You know, so uh, how do you pray? For example, you know, if you if your your pain in the back, you can you can tell. You know, I want you to stretch out your hands and bring it to the center. Right? Look at your fingers. You know, if you have a Christian someone next to you, ask them. Look at your fingers. Are they aligned, or is one one side shorter than the other? How do you pray? Same as your feet. You can sit down and you lift up your leg. Are they the, are they the same length, right? Sometimes when the muscle is uh, muscles pinching the nerve, somehow or other, you know, you, there's a re, there's a misalignment in the body. How do you pray? You know, you, uh, if any of, of you are, are having this okay, this pain right now, you know, why don't you try? Why don't you try? Give it a go. Right? Give it a go. You know, your hands, if your upper pain, upper body pain, okay, or lower body, you can sit down. Sit down, put out your leg. One leg shorter than the other. Okay? Right? Creative miracle, huh? This is a creative miracle. It works all the time because God heals, man. Hallelujah. Okay, so pray. So you stretch out your hand or your leg and just command. In the name of Jesus. I command the muscles pinching the nerves of everyone that is watching right now who has pain in their back. I command the muscles pinching the nerve to release the nerves right now in Jesus' name. You know, and when you begin to pray, right? You begin to pray. You don't pray. You know, you don't pray, oh, please release the nerve. Please, no. You don't break the nerve. You command the nerve, right? If a dog is biting you, right? You know, you say, please don't bite me. Please don't bite me, huh? No, you command the, the, dog, the dog to live. In Jesus' name, command. Okay, faith, command, speak to the mountain. Okay, I command the muscles pinching the nerves to release the nerve in the name of Jesus. And then command the hand, the arm that is short to grow to the same length as the other arm. Same length in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, once you've done that, you, will, you somehow you will feel it, you can feel it, you know, and then test yourself. Is the back, is the pain still there or not? Okay, test yourself. Okay, you know, that, and that's how you begin to pray for yourself too. You know, God has given you the power of prayer, the power in the name of Jesus, and the name of Jesus has healing in His name. Amen. Okay, the name of Jesus, you know, has give has purchased healing, your healing, your health, your new life for you. So, you know, when we claim the name of Jesus and we speak to the pain in the body, whatever part or situation, begin to believe, you know, believe God, I, be, be healed, the pain be gone, the, the tumor be gone, the cancers be gone, in Jesus' name. 
and then you just trust God and just thank the Lord for it. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's not what I'm going to preach today, but I'm going to share something. You know that the Lord uh, just stirred in my heart, you know, these few weeks. I've been reading the book of Jeremiah, going a bit slow, you know, because Jeremiah is a, it's a very, uh, it's quite a tough book to read, you know, because, you know, we have uh, in the Bible, right, there's the book of Lamentation, you know, that in the Bible, there are, there's the book of Psalms too, you know, and many of us, uh, we, we, we know that Lamentation and Psalms is, is man pouring his emotions in praise, in, or sometimes in complaint, you know, sometimes in, in, in this, this in discouragement or depression to the Lord, right? You know, but in the book of Jeremiah, especially the first 10 or 20 chapters, you know, this, this is God's lamentation. This is God's complaint, you know, God's frustration about mankind. You know, God's long suffering, right, is not endless. There's no, it's not infinite. God's long suffering has a limit. You know, it has a limit. And he's, but sometimes it's so, it's so many generations uh, to the point that God cannot tahan already, cannot take it anymore. You know, he began to raise up people to tell the people that judgment is going to come. Judgment is going to come. You know, and, and Jeremiah was warning Israel, warning Judah, that God is fed up. You know, God is fed up with their callousness towards him. God is fed up towards their, their unbelief, towards their... Yeah, the way their lifestyle is that is full of sin. You know what is sin? Sin is living apart from God. You know, sin is disregarding God, disregarding how God feels, disregarding the laws of God. You know, disregarding the command of God and and taking your and, and, and listening to your own thoughts, listening to your own your the value that you you have accepted as the way of life that is contrary to the way of God, right? You know. And, and this Saturday, you know, I, I, God put in my heart to share about testimony, my testimony, you know, but not just about my testimony, but I believe God wants to encourage you to realize that, you know, your testimonies are very important, no matter how yes. big or how small it is. You know, that's how God changed you. And your testimony is how God would change someone just like you, you know, and someone else that, that you think that your, your testimony won't help a person get to Christ, but it will. You know, all of us, you know, Pastor Chris Rue, he shared last week in his church, right? Our Christian walk with God is a series of yeses. You know, it's a series of saying yes to God in everything. You know, can you imagine, I'm, uh, I'm tired, actually I'm quite tired. You know, if I, if I have given in to my tiredness, I won't discover that, hey, even in my weakness, the grace of God abounds, mm. right? Okay, I've not prepared a message, you know, but God is just speaking, right? He's put, as I speak, the words just come into my spirit, right? You know, and, and sometimes when we give in to our flesh, we give in to ourselves, just like in the Israelites, the Ju uh, people, the Judah, in the book of Jeremiah, there, there has been a point in their life where they just, just stop believing, where they just started to say no to God. They started to say no to the way of God. They started to say no to the to the to the commands of God. They started to say no, you know, to believing in God or to trusting God. And that's where the downfall begins to come in. You know, so but the thing is, you know, there are many, there are many people that have said no to the Lord. Even men and women of God that are of of that are popular in Christ in the in the church world. Many have come out powerful, you know, servants of God, but many have fallen too. Why? Because, you know, sometimes when we say no to God, we, we run the risk of, of giving up. We run the risk of uh, uh, saying no consecutively, right? When you give in to your flesh, your flesh will find its way to come back in. When you give in to the devil, the devil will find its way to come back in even greater. Right? So sometimes we have to, as Paul says, beat our body into subjection. You know, sometimes we have to bring ourselves, whether we like it or not, to obey the Lord. Right? Just like in this time of pandemic, you know what can you do? But to trust God. Mm. But, you know, and, and, and we know that, you know, God put in my, in my wife's heart and even my heart to know this. 
in this time, you know, God is dealing with all of us. You know, God has shut every church in the world for three, four months, right? Mm. Every church, nobody can get into a church. From Sri Lanka to Delaware in the United States to Malaysia and Johor Bahru, every church in the world is shut. Why? There must have been a reason. There must be a reason. That God must have a purpose in doing that. You know, can anyone shut the church? No. The church is the bride of Christ. Right? God put His name in every church, whether good or bad, whether, whether it's big or small. Every church carries the name of, God, of, of Christ. But why did God do it? Maybe to discipline us, to bring us to a place, you know, to hunger after Him again, to start to say yes to Him again. You know how? In needing of Him, in our desperation of Him, we will start to say, yes, God, I need you. I really need you. You see in Jeremiah chapter 5, you know it says in verse 9, oh sorry, okay in chapter 5, it says in verse 9, should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord, should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this, okay, go through her vineyards and ravage them, but do not destroy them completely, you see God will send a, uh, God planned to send a punishment you know, a, a, a judgment to Israel and Judah. This was in the time of Babylon when they ended up in captivity, right? You know, but God said only to judge to a certain amount. You know, judge to a certain limit and then, and but not to the end. Why? Because God knows that when God moves in correction, when God corrects and God judges, right? You know, a certain amount of people will turn back. You know, and this certain amount of people in their turning back to God will inspire others to turn back to the Lord too. Right? Okay? And that has always been about history. God saves the remnant, remnants, moves the remnants, and then the remnants will stir the multitudes back to Him. Just like why God put uh, salvation into the Gentiles. Why? So that He will, he will provoke, provoke the, the Israelites to come to Him. You know, provoke jealousy in the Israelites. How can God bless them? You know, you know, so that you know, so that, that's how God works and how God moves, right? But but the house of Israel and the house of Judah have been utterly unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. Verse twelve: They have lied about the Lord. They said He will do nothing; no harm will come to us. We will never see a sword or famine. The prophets are but wind, and the word is not in them. So that. What they say be done to them. Verse 12. You know, they have lied about the Lord. They say He will do nothing. No harm will come to us. You see, sometimes when you start saying no to God, and you start saying yes to sin, you will, people will start to convince themselves because that God will not judge. God will not bother. God will not look to us. You know, God has not blessed us. So, you know, and, and they have lied about the Lord. You know, they have lied about the Lord. You know, if you can count your blessings, please do. Count the blessings. From the day you were born, the, the, the time that the, you were born again, the moments you have said yes to the Lord. Why? Because God has blessed you. God has provided for you. The moments you say yes, Lord, to, to God, you know, to go in a certain way that He wants you to go. The moments you have said yes and thank you, Lord. You know, count your blessings. You know, count your blessings from the day you were born again right to this part of uh, time. You will know that you have been blessed in many, many ways. You have been blessed, countless of blessings that God has provided for you from answered prayers to miracles, to breakthroughs, to using you to change other people's lives for Him, for His kingdom. And God has blessed you indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Give thanks and you will see the blessings of God in your life. Give thanks and you'll see that God has been faithful in your life. Begin to thank the Lord for your family. Begin to thank the Lord for the car that you have are driving. Begin to thank the Lord for the house you are living in. Begin to thank the Lord for the hotel that maybe you are holidaying in. I don't know. Okay? Begin to thank the Lord for the mission trips that you have been to and touch and God has used you to touch many lives. Begin to thank the Lord for the good weather. You know when you want the sun, God gave you sun so to can dry your carpets. Right? Begin to thank the Lord and you will see and you will know that God has been faithful and has been good to us. Amen? Yeah, I want to close with this. 
Okay, this is just a short sharing. Okay, uh, two, Chron two Chronicles chapter twenty. You know, in, in this whole story of King Jehoshaphat, right? You know, we have seen time and time again in the Old Testament how people became began to become successful and break through in the things of God. How they began to pick up from their brokenness and began to re instate their position or their life in God. You know, just like just like in the time of Elijah, after the prophets of Baal had failed in their attempt to bring down the fire, you know what did Elijah do? He rebuilt the altar to the Lord. He rebuilt the altar to the Lord. And you will see this again. You know, just like just like uh, was it Elisha or Elijah when he ran up uh, Elijah when he had to run up the mount the, the, the mountain Mount Sinai. You know, I, I'm wrong about the name of the mountain. Forgive me. Okay, you know, he had to run up the mountain seven times. What does it mean? You know, to persist in prayer, rebuild the altar of prayer again, and persist in prayer, persist in your request to the Lord. You know, and you will see the breakthrough. Many times in the Bible, you will see the imagery of how people reinstate or reinstall or rebuild their altars of prayer, and they will see the breakthroughs come again. So, in the time of our King Jehoshaphat, you know, let's let's not let's no longer walk, you know, in in in, in frustration to God. God has feelings. We see in Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, how God was so furious and so frustrated with people. You know. God has feelings, friends. He has feelings. Have you have we ever considered his feelings at all? How God feels in the way we live. How God feels in the way we speak. How God even feels the way we think. God can see our thoughts. Right? Yeah? You know, when you begin to answer God correctly, you will hear God says, He's happy with you. You know. Many times I had this dream about going to Australia right, in the past. I always share this in my church as well. You know, but it was in this time, in this in these three months, I realized God taught me this: that that dream uh, is not to move me to Australia, but that dream was God checking my heart. Where am I standing? Where am I standing? You know, and in this in this recently, God gave me the dream again. And my reply to God has changed. My reply to God is like this. God, dreams are not authority and reality. Okay, they're just imagery. How do I know whether it's real or not? Unless you speak, O oh God. Your word, O oh Lord, is authority and reality. If you have not spoken, a dream could be, could be, could be without confirmation from you, could just be my desire. You know, being played out in my in my in my dreams. Lord, so whatever it is, the future belongs to you. But whatever I'm doing now, I know you have called me here. My heart, my hundred percent belongs to you right here. So God, but you but you know better, you know what's best for us, God have your way. And the moment I say God have your way, because God you know better, you know what I heard? I heard God say. You have answered right. You have answered rightly. And, and, and do you know that even though you, you may not see God, but when God smiles at you, happy with you, you can see it. You can see it, right? Not with your physical eyes, of course, but somehow your spirit knows that God is happy. You know, God takes delight. And you, when we know how to surrender. Hmm. So in finishing, in closing, you know, King Jehoshaphat had many nations coming after him. What did he do? He commanded the whole nation to bow down in prayer and fasting. Right? He didn't rush out into battle. He didn't rush out to get his, his army together. But what did he do? He bowed down in prayer. He bowed down in worship. He commanded the whole nation to wait on God. You know, and this was why he did it. You see, in verse 9 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it uh, was it. They have lived in it and have built in a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence. You see? If calamity comes upon us, 
whether the sword or of judgment or plague or famine, whether the sword or judgment is, the, is this pandemic a judgment? Don't know. Maybe for some people. Okay? But all of us, you know, God loves those that He corrects, right? Okay. Right? Judgment or plague is the pandemic a plague? Yes. Okay? Or famine. That means if trouble comes our way, you know, if trouble comes our way, what do we do? Fight? No. Okay? The blessed are those that are meek. Okay? For God will defend them. For God will stand up for them. Right? Okay? You know, so it goes on to say, we will stand in your presence. You see, in, in verse 9, we will stand in your presence, O oh God. We will seek your face, Jehoshaphat said. We will stand in your presence. We will seek your face before this temple that bears your name. Okay? What is the temple that bears the name of Christ? It's the church. No matter how big or how small, no matter how loud, how you think the church is lousy, you think the pastor is, is, uh, is uh, like, uh, like a de demon. <laughs> you know? No lah. Okay? No. God loves the church. Let's come to a place we stop, you know, having an opinion about the kingdom of God, about the church. Let's come to a place where we stop having an opinion about the servants of God. Let God deal with all of that. That is not our position. To judge is not our position. Our position is to what? Just worship the Lord. Go above it. Why would stay in a mess? The, the Bible says in Psalms 1, Blessed are those who, 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 who does not stand in the path of sinners, right? Does not sit in the seat of a scornful. You know, does, does not, does not, uh, it's the man who does not stand in the path of sinners, sit in the seat of the scornful. You know, okay, or in, on, on, on the, huh? His delight. Uh, his delight, you know, our delight is, is, to, is to meditate upon the word of God, is to be in the presence of God. Right? So don't stand in a place where, where, where people are making fun, or mocking, or ridiculing, or you know, that kind of thing. Let's go above it already. Yeah. Don't, don't stay in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the low levels of life. Go up. Come up. You know, to new life. Come up to new life. You know, don't let your ears, don't, don't be troubled about the issues of, that are in the church world. There are plenty. There are plenty. But that is God's business. That's not our business. Let God deal with the people in the world. Right? Our business is to what? Is to worship the Lord. Our business is to make sure that we are faithful unto the Lord. We can't change the whole world, but we can start by changing us, ourselves. I cannot, even though I'm a pastor, I preach, you know, but I cannot change any member in my church. You know, the only person that can, I can change is myself. You know, it's myself. I can change my wife. You know, only God can. Nagging doesn't change anybody. You know, but praying and blessing and loving does. God's way does. So in closing, you see how King Joseph had said in verse 9 still, Before this temple that bears your name will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. And then in verse 12, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army or vast problem that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you. Means what? Lord, it's time for me to say yes to you. It's time for me to fix my focus back to you again. My eyes are upon you. Close your eyes to the world, the masses, the issues around that. Be alert, be aware, but don't be, don't be entangled by it anymore. Close your eyes, your ears to the world. But be alert, be aware what's going on. You know, but at the end of the day, let's be alert in our focus, our hearing of what God is doing, what God is saying. Amen? Just like Jesus said, he will only work. He will only be where, the, where he sees the Father working. Okay? When do you see the Father working in your life? Do you know it? If you, can't, if you cannot answer it, you better seek the Lord till you know where God is working in, in your life and through your life. Know the call of God in your life. 
take the time to seek Him up to the point that you know the call of God in your life. What it is that God wants you to do? And move in Him. Move with Him. Move in Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't wonder anymore. Come to a place where God begins to have a relationship where you are yoked together with Him. Amen? Walking together with Him. Amen? Hallelujah. And you must begin to find the freedom and liberty that you've been searching for for all this while. Amen? Amen. Our eyes are upon the Lord. Amen. 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 Nothing else, no one else, but upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is my rest. Okay, holiday, good, but I rather holiday in the Lord, wherever it is. Even at home, I can holiday with the Lord in His presence. Amen. Delight yourself in God and He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. God is true to His word. He's not a liar. He's faithful to mm. His word. What He has said, He will do. He's mm. faithful to His word. Because His word concerns you. Amen. Concerns us. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I commit everybody into your hands. May you continue to strengthen our faith in you. May you continue to give us faith, for oh God, Father, in your Son, in the Gospel, in the finished work of the cross, oh Lord. Help us to live in the power of the Gospel. Lord, hallelujah, for it may be foolishness to those that are perishing, but for us, oh God, the Gospel, the good news that Jesus has died for us, Jesus has given us life, oh God, is power unto our salvation, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, I pray, O oh God, that you begin to move us up of the masses of the world, masses of the entanglement in the world, and move us into a place, O oh God, where we flow with you in new life. O oh God, it's not that we are not aware of what is going on, but we become aware. And we begin to see things as you see it. We begin to know it as you know it. We begin to speak to it as you would speak to it, O oh God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help us to know the truth that Jesus is and we will set us free. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Who the Son of God sets free is free. free. Father God, we just thank you that you have freed us, O oh God, in your Son. And we are free indeed. And all our people, all God's people said, Amen. 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 If you are free in Christ, say Amen. Type Amen. Amen. And give the glory unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We just ask Pastor Caroline to come and close us in prayer. Alright, okay, join us. Uh, don't forget to join us back this Saturday for the Word of God. Okay, live from Word of Life Church. Mm. Okay, stream live. And good news as well, if, those of, if, you, are, if you do not know, okay, uh, we restream the service okay, uh, on Sunday via YouTube and via Facebook Live. Okay, mm. alright, at 10 a.m. 5 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. on Sunday. Amen? Okay, God bless you. Okay, and know that Jesus loves you. Go in the peace of God. Bye-bye. Have a good night's rest. Jesus loves you.